in what turned out to be an intense weekend of oil and gas related fires. Friday's the Gulf of Mexico caught on fire clip stole the show. Like many people, I was blown away and more than a little disconcerted. And I had a few questions. The top ones being, how did this happen? And is the gas on fire all the way down? And then on Saturday, a second clip emerged. Like many people, I was bemused and perplexed by what I was seeing. And yeah, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I know absolutely nothing about natural gas drilling or firefighting. So I decided to use my mind tools, Google, and yeah, I did a little research and here's what I found out. At around 5.15 a.m. local time in the Gulf of Mexico, a pipeline carrying natural gas ruptured near the Ku Charlie satellite platform, which is in the Ku Malub Zap oil field. Look, I took a stab at pronouncing it, okay? The Mexican state-owned petroleum company Pemex issued a statement saying that the fire was extinguished and the pipeline was under repair within six hours and there were no injuries or fatalities. The director of Mexico's Security, Energy and Environment Agency said on Twitter that the leak did not cause a spill, which, you know, kind of seems unlikely given that the ocean was on fire. Mexican President Obrador on Monday confirmed the Pemex statement and said that while an exact cause for the pipeline failure and the fire were unknown, sabotage or intentional damage could be ruled out. So that's the overview to my questions. Yes, in all likelihood, it is plain old seawater. Water extinguishes fire by going from liquid to gas, aka steam, which eats up the heat energy of the fire, and the water and the steam also act to displace oxygen that the fire needs to keep burning. And these principles still hold true even if the fire is in or on the water. From the reports and statements, we know that these boats were tasked with protecting the rig and controlling the fire, while valves controlling the flow of gas were shut off. But if enough water was poured onto the fire, these boats probably could have put it out on their own. Boats of this size could pump in excess of 40,000 gallons per minute. Now, there certainly could be fire retardant chemicals or foams in the stream that we see here. These are fire boats and they are equipped to handle different fires and these chemicals might have been employed had the rig itself caught on fire, but given their mission, they probably weren't employed in the situation. But of course, the official report is still pending, so don't take this as gospel. So yeah, to someone who knew nothing about fireboats, it would seem dumb, but it's actually pretty straightforward, standard stuff, and it's a solid plan given the fact that you have access to a literal ocean's worth of water, and many vessels in the area would have had the pumps and hoses ready to go, even if they weren't dedicated emergency vessels, which these appear to be. As to this little dude, <laughs> what was likely happening is that they were cautiously moving into position. Remember, they're reversing backwards, you know, in a choppy sea next to an oil rig and a flaming eye of natural gas more than 50 meters across. So yeah, if you were in that position, you'd also probably back up very slowly and deliberately from hundreds of meters away. So there you have it. Boring, old firefighting seems to be going on here. Sorry, guys. But I've got you, cheer up. In doing research, I found some other more exciting oil rig firefighting clips. When the Iraqi army set the Kuwaiti oil fields on fire back in 1991, the international firefighting team occasionally used explosives to put out the fires. And in 2020, Russian soldiers fired an anti-tank gun at a flaming wellhead. With mixed results. And let's not forget the Soviets used a nuke to shut down an underground gas fire back in the 60s. Nine, nine. I guess we should be thankful though for boring firefighting because it doesn't always work the exciting way and often causes more problems than it's worth. Apparently radiation happens when you nuke something. <laughs> And even regular bombing or explosives can cause problems. You may know about the Gates of Hell in Turkmenistan, which was a Soviet attempt to seal off a gas leak that instead ignited it. And oops, it's been burning for something like the last 40 years. But the climate change and environmental harm aside, it isn't all bad because it looks awesome and you can cook marshmallows and other food on it if you can get close enough. Oh, and the president of Turkmenistan in 2019 shot this sick video of himself driving around the crater in a rally car to dispel rumors that he had died. Dope.
If you don't know who the president is, you may recognize him from this video where he held a puppy so awkwardly and weirdly that notorious nice man Vladimir Putin jumped up to save it. So weird. Next question, is this gas on fire all the way down to the pipeline? Now I couldn't find a definitive answer. I'm not a physician, physicist, I don't know, science man. But my heart says no. Unfortunately, there was no flaming underwater tornado. I tried to find some information or footage of something similar, you know, about making gas fire underwater. And this is as close as I got. My guess is that as it bubbles up the gas stream and the flames disrupt the surface enough to create air pockets that may allow the fire to appear to be burning below the surface. It would have to be some kind of vortex dragging oxygen down along the stream for it to burn underwater, which would be impossible given the gas itself is pushing everything in the opposite direction. That's my thinking anyway. If there was a flaming gas tornado, the only way that I can think of is that the gas itself would have been mixed with oxygen, you know, coming from the pipeline. But that seems like a terribly irresponsible way to transport highly flammable gas. So you can't rule it out. Um, I have no idea what I'm talking about. What do you think? Fire tornado, surface fire only. Let me know in the comments below. That will be fully determined during the investigation. But in his statement, President Obrador suggested it was lightning that ignited the gas. But I'll also point out that many rigs regularly vent or flare massive fireballs as part of the extraction process. But yeah, I couldn't even tell you if this rig has a flare tower. A deeper answer to how did this happen probably lies with Pemex itself, which is around $113 billion in debt, even though it runs a huge oil field. And the vast majority of that debt came before the COVID oil crunch. Normally this kind of situation in a state-run enterprise, or really any enterprise, suggests major inefficiencies as a best case scenario and significant corruption in the worst case scenario. Regardless of what exactly is happening, and I can't delve into it now, it probably isn't conducive to regular safety checks and well-maintained machinery and pipelines and things like that. We'll have to wait and see, but I will note that part of President Obrador's election platform was based on returning Pemex to its former glory, and he has poured billions of dollars of public money into it while fighting to avoid privatization of drilling in the Gulf. His party performed somewhat poorly in the midterm elections in June 2021, and generally speaking, setting the ocean on fire is not a way to win re-election. But let's remember that despite the spectacular visuals, this is a relatively minor accident as far as oil rig fires go. The worst disaster, you might remember Deepwater Horizon back in 2010, pumped over 100 million gallons of oil into the Gulf. So politically, economically, and ecologically, the fallout could be quite limited, fortunately, I suppose. Of course, that didn't stop Twitter users and politicians from dunking and counter-dunking on one another. And yeah, it's probably symptomatic of wider problems, you know, within Pemex, within drilling operations in the Gulf, and of course, you know, humanity's reliance on fossil fuels. So yeah, that's uh, just, you know, a weekend update, I suppose. I hope I provided some value, provided some information there that you didn't have. Please let me know what you think. Should we keep drilling? Is drilling the way forward? Or, you know, if you really care about climate change, maybe we should build some <coughs> nuclear power station. Let me know if you have any more information. If I got something wrong, you want to add something, please let me know in the comments below. Love to hear from you guys. And yeah, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.